Hey everyone, it's Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Welcome back to another video. I just did a drop off at the post office of some packages just because I happen to be around town here and uh, I'm gonna do a little local sourcing because uh, Mrs. Primetime is supposed to come out with me this morning but she's still getting ready so I decided to stay close and just kind of randomly hit up some spots that show up on Yard Sale Treasure Map and then uh, hopefully uh, I'll pick her up sometime soon and we will go out and try to find some stuff together. Unless she calls me and says, eh, just go out by yourself today. So we'll see what happens and uh, let's go hit up some initial spots around here. All right, rolling up on our first couple ones here. Did I just happen to spot visually? Didn't even uh, see it with the art sale treasure map. So we'll stop off here, see if there's any goodies. So these look interesting. Always look for uh, Pokemon. This is a good one. It's about 20 bucks. There's a bunch of them here. Got the DS games. It's got Mario. Star Wars. And a system. Make an offer. Hmm. Okay, got to test this thing out. We've got a bunch of uh, 3DS as well. So maybe I can get a big... A big lot here, big lot purchase. That's what I would look for. So let's see if we can do it. See if we can pull it off. Okay, so no can do for several reasons. Uh, we could not make a deal. Uh, really, the main thing is that she just wanted too much for everything. She wanted um, $10 per 3DS game, and then she wanted $7 for the regular DS games. I try to pick these things up for a buck or two if I could find them, and in a bulk lot like that, you're trying to get them for like a buck or even less. Uh, so 10 to $7 per game, no discount for bulk, just wasn't going to make any sense. She wanted $30 for the system, and the other issue was that the system wasn't in the best condition and wasn't what matched the box. When people buy it, they want it to match what's in the box. So it showed purple on the outside and inside it was a black one. And the colored systems go for more than the regular standard black systems. And so because of that, you know, it was scratched up a bit and stuff, it just didn't make any sense to pay $30 for the system that didn't have a matching box plus that much for all of the games. So uh, you just gotta you know, walk away from situations like that. I just wanted to point that out because a lot of times I'm showing, uh, showing you all that I'm making these great deals and these bulk lot purchases, but it's just a good example that you know, sometimes you can't make a deal. It doesn't make sense. She wanted to piece them out throughout the day, which is fine. Makes sense for her. If she could sell them for that price, that's great. Uh, but you know, for my purposes, it doesn't make sense. So let's move on to the next sale. See if we can find something better there. So I just tried to stop off at this one here and uh, it's funny, I walked up and she said, sorry, uh, no big guy stuff here. And uh, turns out there really wasn't anything good for uh, flipping. So moving on once again. Sean in the house coming through with the first sale of the day for 25 cents. You really can't beat that. Any kind of uh, hip hop shirt like this, which is kind of just really big and just in your face, those kind of things you want to look for. They generally sell pretty well. This one just sold for $28 on eBay. So to pick it up for a quarter, you can't beat that. There's one currently there for 19, but still for a quarter pickup, it's light easy to ship first class just toss it in a poly bag and you're on your way so yes i do sell clothes um i've been doing that for a while now and uh it's a nice little profitable uh part of the reselling business that i run even though i'm more known for doing collectibles and vintage stuff but you know i've been dabbling in the clothes for a little bit and um you know it's something i put up here and then so uh, always try to actually have something in my store that is clothing related. So uh, we are on to an estate sale. I actually saw that on the way. So we're going to continue on. If we see anything along the way, we'll stop off. Miss Primetime just texted me. We're going to meet up a little bit later. So hopefully that comes through. And uh, let's see if we can find anything at that estate sale. So this is our estate sale target right here. It's 1030 in the morning. This sale started at nine o'clock. It was also going on yesterday, Friday from nine to two. That's one of the things that's tough about a full-time job that you have. And if you're doing this on the side is sometimes you're going to miss out 
on the Friday sales unless you take the day off, which I do do sometimes, but I couldn't do it yesterday. So this house has been picked through, but we'll see if we could find anything that was left behind. Sometimes you'll find things that are there that were priced too high the day before, but now they're willing to uh, work with you on the price some more since it's towards the end of the sale. This sale ends today at two, so uh, they'll be motivated to sell today. So let's see if there's anything left in there. All right, I'm gonna check out this basement. I was a woodworker. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what we got in here. Got some tools to look through. Cool. All right, take a look. Let's see if there's anything we can find here. So you may remember a prior video, I've taken one of these jacks off before, I've unscrewed them, but uh, this one's not worth it, it's not name brand, and it's kind of wobbly, it's not, not really working well, and it's pretty beat up, so we're not going to take the time to do that. Uh, the stuff in here, there's just nothing worthwhile to get. Sometimes this stuff is good, but uh, I've looked through all these drawers, and uh, a lot of the stuff too, when you open it up, it's rusted and stuff and people aren't gonna want that. The boxes look cool, but if you look up the comps, they're really not worth anything. So, same thing with the stuff uh, in here. Like, um, there was a cool box here. You know, it looked like it had some potential with these brads and nails, but uh, you look them up, they're just, they're just not worth anything. So, uh, we're just gonna pass on this stuff and uh, see if we could uh, find something else here. Well, Mrs. Primetime has arrived, and uh, she at least scored something. She got some sandpaper. I actually found it for her, right, Mrs. Primetime? So she could use this for her furniture project. So not a total waste. Then some hinges. Can we see those hinges? Right there. <laughs> got some hinges right here. So uh, not bad. At least something for her and for her furniture business and stuff. Okay, so this is never a good sign. This is one of these crafty cookbook type houses. So... Uh, Lots of that type of stuff here. Lots of these little knickknacks and tchotchkes that uh, don't really have much value. You know, you got a whole room of Christmas stuff. So, yeah, just striking out, you know, tins, like cookie tins and stuff. Just, you know, nothing you could do anything with, unfortunately. Well, I definitely could use a tape measure for down in the uh, basement area of Primetime Treasure Headquarters. So we'll take that. Another bad sign, plates and the word Avon. My gosh, I mean, there's so much Avon stuff around and very rarely is it ever worth anything. So it's always a bad sign when I come to a house and there's Avon there, so <laughs> keep on looking. Okay, it's just an example of another room and uh, another bad sign is when you see Raggedy Ann and Andy stuff uh, around. That's another thing that just doesn't sell well. And um, here, these games, they're pretty beat up. A bunch of them don't have the components that they need. And this uh, Trivia Pursuit game here, even though it's partly sealed, there's this is from 1981. There's a million of these around and even sealed. You're lucky if you could get 16 bucks out of it. That's with shipping. And uh, this is pretty heavy. So you got to know your comps and uh, you got to pass on stuff like this. So not much in here. And 
Not much in here either. It's one of those houses. Let's get out of here. All right, well, when one estate sale fails, then uh, you try to find another one. It says it's an estate sale. It's not done by an estate sale dealer. It looks like it's done maybe by a family or something. There's some guy standing outside tossing stuff in a dumpster. So uh, we'll see if the whole house is actually open. Yeah. All right, head down to the basement. <laughs> Vintage Star Wars stuff, looking forward to it. I want you to see what I'm gonna get, what I'm gonna try to go back and look at. Pretty interesting. So, we've got to get in this crawl space back here and uh, check out some of these older Star Wars toys. So that's the mission. It's going to be tight squeeze here, but uh, I'll get in there. Yeah, I could just kind of squat here and squat my way over. So. I'm gonna check this stuff out here. Mm -hmm. This is a do back. It's a do back. Let's see if it's in here. We got it. It's in here. Um, slave one. Box. There we go. Got that. Darth Vader Tie Fighter. Looks to be here. Just gotta attach the parts. Transporter. Be in good condition? Plus the boxes. The boxes are a little beat up, but. Star Wars Twin Cloud Car. There we go. Looks to be complete too. So these little things open, the figures go in there. And this is from 1980. 1980. Uh, got another another TIE fighter right here. And then there's more over here. The Creature Cantina, right there. This is the bottom of it. There's supposed to be a top though. I don't know if that's here. Yeah, this is the top part that goes onto it. see what else we got here sudden death this was uh, this was an old toy manufacturer back in the day so this one's 1978 1978 okay rebel armored snow speeder not bad in here and we got a figure in here too there we go oh we got two figures Star Wars fans will be getting a kick out of this all right so we got both of those guys that's nice 
nice. Nice little bonus. Land of the Jawas action playset. Looks like parts of it are here. I think that might be the whole part. Let's see. Let's, let's see. We've got that as the base right here. See? Okay. And then this is. And then this is the part that goes on top and even has the elevator shaft too. Pretty cool. All right. We've got an X Wing fighter jet. This one would need some cleaning. Um, pretty stained up here, but it definitely could be cleaned up. Not, it won't be, you won't be able to make it perfect, but you could clean it up and make it look much better. Starbird Command Base. Oh my God, this thing is huge. Milton Bradley. Uh, let's see if we can get a year off this thing. 1978. Let's see what it looks like inside. Not bad. Looks to have a lot of the pieces. Not bad at all. I'll have to check the comps on it. Okay, and the next item is this uh, big Star Wars Millennium Falcon spaceship with the box. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I got it out. Um, you could see there's a bunch of staining here on the front. The back and the middle doesn't really have much. The bottom is nice and clean, pretty much. These stains, though, you got to look past them. These stains, they really look unsightly, but they could wipe off. Like, if you look right here, like, we could just rub it, and it'll come off. So you could use that in negotiation. It's just going to take time, but this will come off really fast. So uh, this is a good item. And uh, at the bottom of the box, there's all these little accessory guns and things, so... Those could be uh, valuable as well. Uh, sometimes people will pay a lot of money just for one little gun. So that's cool. Uh, up there we've got the uh, Bionic Mission Vehicle from the Six Million Dollar Man series. Let's see if that's in there. Well, it's there. There's other things in there too, so wow. This is crazy. That's just nothing. What's in here? Boy Scout stuff. I don't know. I'll have to look through to see if there's anything good. So no, it's uh, just, just all Boy Scout stuff. So we'll skip past this. Just pulled out Obi-Wan Kenobi in there. There's probably other figures too. Boy, this really is a, uh, a nice... Nice find. This is this is really what treasure hunting is uh, is all about. This is a uh, cool item too. It's a Sears uh, base station Morse code uh, machine. So these go for fifty if they work. I don't know if they work right now, but uh, that's what they can go for. This uh, Ford seventy seven hundred tractor is uh, great as well. Just needs to be dusted off. I've got to get this added into the mix for sure. Ugh, just keeps on coming. This is a really nice uh, Hubbly Kitty toy. So you ever see these? Pick these up. These go for like 40, 50. This is a nice shape. All right, so let's take a look in here. 
Uh, okay, this is the uh, Mattel Thing Maker. So it's a metal mold maker, and hopefully, yeah, we've got the metal molds in here. So even if this doesn't work, which it probably doesn't, um, these metal molds can definitely be worth uh, some good money if you have them in like a lot, like a big enough lot of them you could sell for like a hundred bucks. So need to be cleaned off a little bit, but uh, there's a bu bunch of them here. I mean, this is this, this is a rare Mattel game for sure. So uh, definitely cool. Someone would be very interested in this. So we got we got to add this in as well. Okay, these two we're gonna keep here. This one is not complete. And this one, the comps are not good on it. So uh, it's too big and bulky, especially with the shipping rate increases now. We are gonna leave these here and focus on the Star Wars stuff and uh, some of these other miscellaneous things that we found. Good thing I uh, looked at the Bionic Mission vehicle a little more. That's a darn shame, but uh, it is cracked, damaged, and uh, we're gonna have to leave this here, fortunately. All right, folks, um, just made the deal. So all this stuff for 120, they wanted 150, got it for 120. We'll talk about this baby here. This baby should cover everything and then some. No box on this, but uh, what the heck, we'll just uh, toss it in. This is part of the deal anyway, so. Okay, so my goal in tight quarters like this is to try to compress everything together, drag everything over here, and then I could get over this entryway here and then get out and load all this stuff in my car. So everything from there has been uh, removed and brought over here. Again, we're leaving those things behind for the reasons I just uh, explained, but uh, all this stuff is coming home to primetime treasure head quarters all right i still got my mask on you have to wear masks in places like this or you're gonna get sick trust me i've done it before and you have to wear the mask all right so i'm out of here we're gonna grab this stuff and uh take it out load it in the car okay everything's cleared out just so you know they were telling me that three days ago all of this was packed packed you cannot even get back there so that stuff had been back there for decades and was only revealed just recently when they cleared all this stuff out of here. All right, primetime treasure mobile is loaded up. Okay, so you always have to come back and get a second look because look what I found camouflaged here on the bench. And yes, look at these. These are in great shape. These are the originals. We are definitely gonna add this into the mix. Wow. So I'm looking up top in this dusty area and this is a great pickup. It has sold really well internationally. So I'm gonna pick this up, dust it off. There's a couple other things looking into as well. This is an audio meter by Belltone. I plugged it in, it worked. I, at least it turned on, the power turned on. I've not seen this model before. This here is an old Bible. Old Bibles sell very well. This is a uh, pictorial Bible and it dates back to 1899, 1900, 1901, somewhere around that range. So uh, it's really cool. You can see here we've got an old inscription from 1901, which helps date it. And then when you go over to the uh, introductory pages, let's see if I can show you here. There's the pictorial family Bible page. Go over here. They didn't always do copyrights exactly back then how we're used to them now but you can see that the latest date there is uh 1899 so between that and that helps date it someone tried selling this for a little over a hundred dollars on ebay didn't sell but uh probably priced it a little too high and uh this is the guy's other room he was really into ammunition this is actually a, uh, a bullet maker. I'm obviously not going to get something like this and sell it on eBay. 
I'm not going to get the ammunition either. But uh, the size of this vice, it's insane. That would have to be a local marketplace sale if you got something like that. But uh, they're going to keep that here. So just wanted to show you. It's an amazing room. But you got to keep firearms off of eBay. Okay, so I wound up getting all the Star Wars action figures. Uh, this is from the 1978 line. Uh, for $40, which isn't bad, considering what I got all of the uh, other uh, items for, for $120. So overall, a great day, great score. I'm going to do very well with this. Uh, just the Millennium Falcon alone with the box. That's very hard to find that with the box. Once I clean that up, that recently sold uh, for right around $400. So that should just pay for everything. So I'm um, looking forward to uh, working on those things, getting them up. Right now, I am hungry and thirsty, so I need to get something to eat. Miss Primetime's calling me. She left. She was the one who was filming me in that crawl space. By the way, you know, if you look at the outside of that house when you walk in, you just see a big dumpster sitting there in the driveway. There's no estate sale company running it. There was barely anybody there. The reason why I found out about those uh, action figures, because ori originally they were trying to tell me, well, there's just tools and furniture, there's really nothing in the house to look at. And I asked him if they had collectibles, comics, that sort of thing. And he said, are you into Star Wars? I said, yeah. He said, well, we have some Star Wars stuff. It's down in the crawl space. You'd have to get back there and all that kind of stuff. I said, all right, fine, no problem. Even Mrs. Primetime was like, you're really gonna go back there in that crawl space and everything and put on a mask? I'm like, absolutely. I mean, that's what part of treasure hunting is all about. You know, there's an adage that the best stuff is in the hardest to find places. And sometimes that's true. So you've got to go looking in those spots and uh, did require, you know, a bunch of work to get there. I mean, you know, in that crawl space, I mean, I'm six foot six, 250 pounds crawling through that crawl space to get all this stuff, but I made it work, got it out. And uh, now I'm gonna get something to eat, get something to drink, call Miss Prime Time, and figure out what we're gonna do from there. All right, so this is one of our dying malls here in uh, Clay, New York. That used to be a Macy's at one point, not anymore. Um, you can see there, it's called the Great Northern Mall. Now the reason I'm here is because they're trying to find something to do with the space. So they're actually doing an indoor yard sale in the mall. And that is the only reason you actually see cars in this lot because normally there's not many cars in the lot anymore. I mean, it's sad. I used to go in here when this was, you know, bustling. Now it's all filled with weeds and the, you know, signs are kind of falling off and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just gross. Um, you know, they're not even maintaining it. So it's not long before this one falls too. And uh, I'm gonna get in there though and see if they got anything in this indoor yard sale. It's towards the end of the day, so hopefully there might be some deals. They only charge the vendors $5 to set up. This uh, actually used to be a Ruby Tuesdays. Uh, and you can see here, it's uh, a shell of its former self. It doesn't even exist in operation anymore. So here's what the setup looks in here. Uh, you know, just some random tables and stuff spread out. If I wind up getting anything, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. They do have a lot of tables set up, which is cool. Um, they've got a bunch more that way. If it wasn't for this though, there'd be nobody walking around up and down this mall here right now. All right, well, time to head out of that place. Uh, basically what it was, was all people who are overpriced vendors at the flea market that I go to on Sunday, who I generally avoid buying things from anyway. So that's pretty much who was set up there. You know, prices were crazy, all that kind of stuff. So let's head on back. All right, so I've got the Millennium Falcon uh, spaceship back here at Primetime Treasure headquarters. Uh, I'm going to focus on this and get this listed first, but let me show you the other items a little closer. Uh, since Mrs. Primetime is filming me from a little far away, I've got them in Primetime Treasure Shed Quarters. So uh, let's head back there and I'll uh, show you those items. All right, so let's get on in here. Uh, you could see here that the uh, shed is really coming along in terms of uh, an area for inventory storage. Now, I really needed a place where 
I could store all these bigger items for big lot purchases that I wanted to make. Uh, so, you know, if I didn't have this, uh, this area here, I wouldn't have been able to make these bigger purchases. Remember, in there is a whole bunch of DVDs. Oh yeah, I almost, I would have forgot to show you this. This is this uh, item, it was a standalone item. I don't even know exactly which uh, set it's from, from Star Wars. So if you know, leave that down in the comment section. I'll figure it out, I gotta research it, but uh, I'm curious what you think about it. It's got like some kind of elevator shaft in the back as well. So, uh, and, and it would break apart, so I could send it in the mail. But uh, it needs to be cleaned up, but pretty cool item. Uh, these here, I'm just gonna show you the boxes so you get a better uh, look at it. It's the X-Wing fighter, and you could see here, um, we've got the dates on the side over here, like this one goes back to 1977, and they're all right around that range, 1977 uh, toy line. Here we've got the uh, Rebel Armored Snow Speeder, so uh, that's a really nice piece as well. Here's the Land of the Jawas uh, action playset. You know, you could just see in terms of like, you know, the hairstyles and, uh, you know, the types of clothes, like the little turtleneck the kids wear. And uh, that also helps date the boxes as well. But the dates of them are all on the side. This is one of my favorite uh, creatures in the whole Star Wars line. You could see here, this is the original 1977 uh, Dubak. Really cool uh, creature. I love creatures like that. Uh, my son's a big fan of the Dubak. We've got the Imperial Troop transporter here so again just give you a little close-up of it uh, we've got the creature cantina it is complete it's got that original cardboard and the cardboards in great shape too so uh, just another one of those great pieces uh, slave one a very famous uh, ship because it is Boba Fett's spaceship and anything Boba Fett is uh, really worth a lot of money and so his ship is worth a lot as well so really cool to find this kind of stuff in box. I mean, it's one thing to find it separately, but to find it, you know, in box like this, uh, see this one's 81 though, but uh, you know, some of them 77, some of them 81. We've got the twin pod uh, cloud car. This one alone could go for between 150 and 200 in the original box like this. I mean, and it's, you know, it's in great shape in there. I mean, it really is a nice shape. So, um, you know, I'll even give you a little close up of this one if you want to see. So, uh, it, you know, it's really nice. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's just sitting in, in the back of that, uh, in the back of that area in that crawl space for decades. And, uh, you know, as a result, it's still in great shape. So we've got that, and we even have uh, we even have one of the inserts here. So it's got some inserts, which is really cool, you know, which shows you some of the other uh, games and, and sets that came around. Uh, maybe I could identify that play set that I've got over here. Maybe that would be in here. Let's see if it's here. Uh, mm, no, I don't see it. So. Yeah, if you know, give me a shout out. Tell me what that thing is. Uh, let's see, we've got the Imperial uh, TIE Fighter as well. This keeps on coming with this stuff. We've got the Darth Vader TIE Fighter, which is really cool. It's kind of like the evil one. So that's pretty neat, you know, more evil. Uh, let's see here. And uh, we've got the Droid Factory as well. That's a really cool item too. So uh, this one, this is 1977 right there. So my goodness, this is just crazy. Uh, what a score. Really, really just, I can't even believe it. All the way back in that crawl space. All right, well, that's gonna be a wrap for today. You know, the Star Wars score really made everything worthwhile going out. It didn't really matter if I found anything uh, after that. So I promised my son that we go home and watch Creed 2. so we're excited for that. And, um, you know, just going to enjoy the rest of the day. I want to give a special thanks to uh, somebody who really made this day possible. You know, gave me the good luck that I needed to get that Star Wars score. And that's none other than Big Sean. We want to give Big Sean a shout out and some props. Thanks, Big Sean. I might have to take Big Sean around with me uh, for the next sale and see if it helps me find anything else. But, uh... 
Anyway, it was a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, share it with others if you liked it. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below, uh, especially if there was one of those uh, Star Wars items that you remember from when you were a kid or that you particularly like or, or what, maybe one of the other toys. Uh, so drop a comment uh, uh, down below and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new subscribe hit the bell for notifications uh, when i make new videos or go live also uh, join the facebook group the facebook reselling resource center we've got tons of seller supporting seller events going on this week uh, the middle of july uh, also uh, make sure that you come follow me on instagram that's at prime underscore time underscore treasure the links to the instagram account and the facebook group which is the reselling resource center that is down below in the uh, description section right where it says see more so just uh, click that and i will see everyone at the next video take care